Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Study Call with Chief McCoy. In this video, we will talk about the seawater cooling system. A ship's engines burn fuel in order to produce energy in the form of heat and converts it into a more useful form like electrical or mechanical energy. But the key word here is heat, and not all of this heat energy can be utilized effectively and converted into useful power. Additionally, when this heat accumulates within the engines, it has the tendency to damage the metallic parts. So what are we supposed to do about it? Well, we're going to need a system to cool things down. And out in the sea, the best and most abundant coolant that we can use is, of course, seawater. The principle of operation of a ship's seawater cooling system is pretty much straightforward. The basic parts are composed of a main seawater pump, which takes suction from the sea through the sea chest, and then it delivers the seawater into the heat exchangers or coolers. These coolers are designed so that the seawater can absorb the heat from the other fluids flowing through them. And then after the seawater leaves the coolers, it then exits the system through the overboard valves and goes back out to the sea. Very simple, right? Now, the coolers or heat exchangers are designed to transfer heat from one fluid to another by means of conduction through a solid boundary. There are two types of heat exchangers commonly used on board ships, the tube type and the plate type. In tube type coolers, the seawater being the fluid used as coolant passes through a set of tubes usually made of brass. The hotter fluid, usually jacket water or lubricating oil, enters the cooler through the shell where it comes into contact with the tubes and thereby transfers heat to the metal by conduction. This works on the principle that heat flows from a region of higher temperature, in this case our hot fluid, to a region of lower temperature, which will be our tubes and of course the seawater continuously flowing inside them. The principle of operation of plate type coolers is the same but instead of tubes, this design uses metal plates, usually stainless steel or titanium, and instead of a shell casing, both fluids flow through either side of the plates alternately. There are two different styles of seawater cooling systems on board modern ships. The first is the direct cooling, and the other is the centralized cooling. In direct cooling, the seawater itself flows through every heat exchanger in the system, meaning from the main seawater pump, it'll go through the lube oil cooler, the jacket water cooler, the main engine air cooler, and many other small coolers used in the various auxiliary machinery before it exits the system and goes back into the sea. Seems quite efficient, right? However, there is always the possibility of leaks within the coolers and if that happens, seawater may contaminate the other fluid. And since seawater is highly corrosive, heavy contamination could have severe consequences. In addition, seawater will corrode the piping so frequent maintenance and repair is to be expected when using direct seawater cooling. In the centralized cooling, instead of letting the seawater pass through all of the coolers, it will pass only through one, the central cooler. In this type of system, fresh water running in a closed circuit is the medium that goes through all the other heat exchangers. And this fresh water, after absorbing all of the heat from the various systems, passes through the central cooler. 
where it will transfer all of the heat to the seawater, which then exits the system and goes back out to the sea. The centralized cooling system offers a lot of advantages over the direct seawater cooling, like less corrosion and lower maintenance cost. However, the initial cost of installation will be relatively higher compared to that of direct seawater cooling. In any case, both systems are effective in serving their main purpose, which is to absorb unusable heat from the engines and eject it into the sea. But that's just one part of the equation. On our next episode, we will discuss the freshwater cooling system, which is directly connected to the seawater system. If you have any other maritime related topics which you are interested in or want me to discuss, feel free to write it down in the comment section below. But for now, class dismissed.